to Anshul. Warm greetings everyone on Indigenous Peoples Day, the original nations around the world, globally. I wish you all warm greetings and here in Nikotsan, Earth is Woman, our continent, our place, where we belong, our lands, our territories, our communities. I say hello to everyone and I embrace you on this day known as Indigenous Peoples Day, also known as the Original Nations Day, a day when uh, for many of us, we're thinking very, very hard and very strongly about how can we each individually and, and mutually, collectively work to um, continue to remember and to insist and to assert that this is a day in which we uh, cannot neglect the reality that we are still very much in a struggle against the forces of domination. Today I'm going to read from New Work, which is part of a, um, an essay uh, that I've um, been working on and writing and will be published soon uh, in a collection edited by Shannon Speed and Lynn Stevens. And uh, this is just one small part of it. Um, I will be pausing a little bit because there's a, a little bit of a space between the poems, so bear with me. And then at the end, I will be reading from a poem I wrote uh, back in 2003 in the collection Naked Wanting, which is uh, speaking to my mother. The title of this poem is So Very Empty, and it's meant to play on the concept and the construct of so very, um, or sovereignty. Uh, so what I do with that word is I think about it in terms of uh, what the force of sovereignty actually has done and continues to do in our communities. So very empty. The wall is not beautiful. There is no beautiful wall. The wall is not a wall that you know about very well. There are holes in the wall. The wall is a reference to US institutions systems, structures. The wall emulates each and every American on one level or another. The wall that is, the wall is a prison, but not a complete prison. But like all Texas prisons, the wall refers back to quashing indigenous descent, to land theft, abuse, and violence, and hiding internal genocides. Capitalism is key, cheap, indigenous, black, immigrant, labor, gas and mineral extraction, cattle, barbed, wired, and willful. Mythology. Yes, the wall is about mythology. The wall is religion, but specifically the worship of U.S. dollars, crucifixion of innocence by the guilty, Elders said there were other walls before this wall. Texans and Americans conflate domination with progress. This wall emerged from research and development, R&D, the academy. The wall is a spectrum of war from 1876, the declaration of taking, to repurposed materials from Vietnam. A spectrum of wars on domestic indigenous freedom, activism. The wall in El Calabos, the dungeon, links past to present to past, an American story, past genocide within to current genocides everywhere, all around us, indigenous resistances. The wall is not beautiful. The wall is a family, a girl, a woman, a man, a boy, a school, a dump site, a cemetery, a classroom, a landfill, a gang rape, a laboratory, a universe, a bank, a holiday, 
a tourist excursion, a hobby, a game, a trick, a treat, a job, a paycheck, rent, debt, credit, a date, a holiday, a secret, a murderer, a victim, triage, ER, a highway, a labor camp, a decision, a promise, a dead end, a blur, a microfocus, a noun, a verb, a subject, a predicate, a possessive, a dispossessive, a singular, a plural, a now, a then, an obsession, a thing, alive, created, undone, lived, disbelieved, owned, denied, known, unknown, inherited, contiguous, claimed, acknowledged, recognized, dismantled, smoked. Sovereignty. Sovereignty. So very empty. So very empty. Woked. We are woked. It is so very empty. They got nothing for us. They've got nothing for us except the dungeon. Not here, not there, not anywhere. To the non-recognized, non-recognition is a long extended detention without formal procedure. There's no specificity on why you're there or nowhere. Who is the warden? When is the release date? How does one appeal? When, dot, 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 semicolon. A stunted sense of self and being, beingness hijacked, jumped, managed, masking her numbing she needs to repress rage. Walden beingness is a managed horrorscape, decorated, toxic tour worthy, for sure. Walled in her dreaming, she dreams of the twin heroes, subject, position. I've been measuring it, the wall. I spent nights woken up, immersed in the walls, characteristics. Nobody officially knows how many pillars make the wall. Like the non-recognized, nobody keeps track of the numbers. It's just a blur. Each time I go counting, I'm surrounded. Armed soldiers and armed custom border patrol. I wonder how many pillars comprise the entire wall. I tell them. I want to know. I obsessively spend months, now years, wondering how many damn pillars really make up the wall. Knowing numbers in genocide research is always emphasized. The last poem is entitled, My Mother Returns to Calabos. And it has an epigraph. The lower Rio Grande, known as the Seno Mexicano, the Mexican hollow, was a refuge for rebellious Indians from the Spanish presidios who preferred outlawry to life under Spanish rule. And that is by Américo Paredes from his book with his pistol in his hand. The fragmented jawbones and comb-like teeth of seagulls sometimes wash up from the gulf to the levee of the river and gather striated along the berms where my grandfather irrigated sugarcane. My mother, returned after 40 years away, walks there often, hassled by INS agents when she jogs by the river. They think she runs away from them, that she is illegal, trespassing from Mexico. Used to this invasion, she asks them, how do they assume? 
how exactly do they know if she came from here or there? I'm an indigenous woman born in El Calaboz. You understand? Do you understand me? She says, and she tells me the story proudly and loudly and says again for emphasis, I told them in Spanish that they should understand the story in both languages. She says that they then tear out their wheels spinning spinning so furiously that the sand beneath them sprays into the humid air and just for a moment seem to be distilled in a fractal, suspended. When I was a girl walking on the levee, I thought I saw Golti chomping at the soil wall. The air was dank steam, the scent of sand, roots, and sometimes something alive came up from beneath the soil, deeper and older than memory. When I immersed my hand inside the cloudy water, it became a fluid form, soft, something becoming, something ancient. The air is still heavy with heat and damp. It smells like diesel and herbicides. The scent reminds me of failed gestations. My reproduction, the plants and the waters, each struggling in the same web of survival. When I was a girl, my grandfather taught me to put a small clump of soil inside my mouth, just beneath the tongue, to swallow it, to taste it. I watched him, and then I did it. I used to watch the gliding and swerves of uprooted reeds and the river's unhurried flow to the gulf. I reached with all my body, stomach on the bank of the levee, hands and arms stretched out like an acrobat, to touch and grasp their slender stems. Once my feet pressed into the soupy bog and stepping up was the sound of gurgles and puckers and pox, like seaweed breathing. Now, I think I'd like to be running with my mother, standing on territory with my mother, standing protecting and defending our land, our life, our community, our territory, alongside my mother. When she tells off La Migra, the Custom Border Patrol, Homeland Security, and the President. Listen to the bubbling duet of water and plant life, she says. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound of the life givers. Listen closely again and again. Yeah, thank you.